and pain I like sunshine and rain I think the key word though is playing hard you must play hard if the kids don't play hard they can have all the built in the world you're not gonna win a lot of basketball game they got to play hard but also you got to bring a group of guys from different backgrounds and put them together and they must play as one emotion every team possesses it the university of minnesota gopher basketball program had experienced a wide range of emotion during its first three years under head coach clem haskins Everything from a 21-game Big Ten losing streak to a third-round appearance in the NCAA tournament. The Golden Gophers had arrived, and the 1989-90 basketball season promised to be filled with more emotion than ever. The Gophers began preparing for the season from down under. In Australia, that is. Minnesota won all seven of its games on the tour. More importantly, the trip helped to bring the team closer together. Back on home court, the Gophers were ready to dig into non-conference play. Preseason polls ranked Minnesota number 20 nationally, and they proved to be deserving by knocking off Kansas State in a rematch of last season's NCAA playoff game. Minnesota had little time to savor its impressive 9-1 non-conference start as their Big Ten season opener brought them face-to-face -face with fourth-ranked Illinois. Guards Kevin Lynch and Melvin Newburn dominated the Fighting Illini's highly touted backcourt en route to a 91-74 win. Minnesota left little doubt that they were serious contenders for a Big Ten title. We don't have uh, too much time to really savor this victory. We'd like to, but got uh, some big, uh, big games coming up right here, so we got to start concentrating on uh, Purdue. The Gophers had been labeled as a team that couldn't win on the road, so West Lafayette, Indiana seemed like the perfect place to prove the critics wrong. But the Purdue Boilermakers had other ideas. Minnesota came out flat, and a second-half surge led by Willie Burton turned out to be too little too late. Things weren't going to get any easier for Minnesota as they headed for Ann Arbor, Michigan in a battle with the number three-ranked Wolverines. The Gophers had only managed to win once in the last two decades at Chrysler Arena. Great guard play and a strong performance by Walter Bond kept Minnesota in the game right to the end, but Michigan managed to squeak out a victory. After two straight road losses, the Gophers were relieved to return to Williams Arena, where they ran over the Northwestern Wildcats 97-75. Minnesota's strength lies in its experience, and that experience came shining through against Ohio State. Senior forward Willie Burton helped the Gophers build a big lead early. The Buckeyes battled back only to see senior guard Melvin Newburn connect on eight free throws down the stretch, and senior center Jim Schickenjansky sink a key shot. Schickenjansky! Schickenjansky with the biggest basket of the game for the Gophers. Like Coach always stress, you're not going to win any games if, until the guards run the show. You know, as long as we run the show, we'll win. Back-to-back -back wins at home weren't enough to keep whispers of road woes from following the Gophers to Madison, Wisconsin. Minnesota came out sleepwalking, but Kevin Lynch and Willie Burton woke up in time to turn a 21-point deficit into a one-point lead with just seconds to go. It looks like Jones could go right to the basket. Oh, 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 oh. While Willie Burton is Minnesota's marquee player, six-foot-six-inch senior Richard Coffey is considered the heart and soul of the Gopher team. It was Coffey's control of the boards that boosted Minnesota to an 84-72 win over Iowa. We control the boards a lot better than we have in the past, and uh, that's one of our strong points. We just hope to get back to that and start doing that more often. If there was one team Coach Clem Haskins and his senior players wanted to beat, it was Indiana. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers had beaten the Gophers the last 15 times the two teams met. Apparently, that was all the incentive Minnesota needed as they proceeded to blow the Hoosiers off the court. Six Gopher players hit double figures, and defensive dynamo Connell Lewis pitched in two three-pointers to bring the Hoosiers tumbling down. Minnesota's 108 points were the most ever scored against a Bobby Knight coach team. We was in a situation where we never beat them before. We just wanted to keep applying that pressure and just keep, it, keep taking it to them. Michigan State head coach Judd Heathcote told anyone willing to listen that Minnesota had the best six-man team in the Big Ten. So when the Gophers stepped onto the Spartans court, it was only appropriate that Minnesota's sixth man, Walter Bond, came off the bench to play his best game of the season. The junior forward scored 15 points, and another junior sealed a four-point victory. Blocked by Lynch! 
big block. Blitz going coast to coast. The Gophers had their first conference road win of the season. Six weeks into the season, the Purdue Boilermakers stood at the top of the Big Ten standings. The Gophers, on the other hand, were undefeated at home. This one was destined to go down to the wire, and it did. Minnesota's Melvin Newburn appeared to have thrown the game away when the Boilermakers picked off a pass with a go-ahead basket, but then it was redemption time. Newburn on a force! A heads-up play by Richard Coffey preserved the Gophers' one-point lead at the buzzer. The Gophers win it! The Purdue win was a confidence builder for Minnesota, whose seven and four conference record kept them in the running for a Big Ten championship. Now it was time for a rematch with Michigan, only this time they would be playing in gold country. Willie Burton's 25 points weren't enough to prevent the Gophers from losing their first home game of the season, 77 to 73. Fearing a letdown after the tough loss to Michigan, Coach Clem Haskins rekindled the fire in his Gophers, and they completed a sweep of Northwestern. Images of the Wisconsin loss etched in their minds, Minnesota was out for revenge at home. We're getting ready to go to postseason play. We can't play the same and win. Understand that. You can't play the same and beat Wisconsin. You can't play the same and beat Iowa. You've got to elevate your game. Everybody's got to elevate your game. Okay. The Badgers were out to prove their win was no fluke and trailed the Gophers by just two points at halftime. We're giving it to them and they just getting buckets. I just don't understand. Minnesota had a tough time trying to pull away from the Badgers in the second half. Suddenly, Wisconsin's Larry Heisel Jr. found himself at the free throw line with no time on the clock and his team trailing by two points. The freshman made good on his first offering, but his second shot bounced off the rim and into the Gophers' win column. Watch that film tomorrow, guys. And you guys should be here no later than three, will they? Walter, go ahead and take your finals, concentrate on that, and do a great job on that finals. What you're here for to get that degree. Jumping in the air and ripping down rebounds comes naturally to Richard Coffey. After all, he was a paratrooper in the Army for three years before enrolling at the University of Minnesota. Coffey could have stayed in the Army as far as the Iowa Hawkeyes were concerned. The senior forward pumped in 18 points at Carver Hawkeye Arena, leading the Gophers to a 102-80 win and a season sweep of Iowa. Minnesota's longest winning streak of the season, three games, was on the line in Bloomington, Indiana. The Gophers caught fire early, opening up a 20-4 lead. But Bobby Knight's Hoosiers battled back and took the lead with four minutes to play. And that's when Minnesota's money man, Willie Burton, took matters into his own hands. Back to Willie. He'll take it. Three. Got it. Burton with a huge three. Burton scored nine straight points down the stretch, boosting Minnesota to a 75-70 win. March 3rd was a day to honor Minnesota's seniors. Apparently, no one let Michigan State know about the ceremony because it was Spartan guard Steve Smith's name that was heard over and over at Williams Arena. The Gophers trailed by nine points with just two minutes to go, then came charging back. Top shot by Willie. Double team brings it. Minnesota would get the last possession in overtime, but Lynch's shot bounced away at the buzzer, and so did the Gophers' shot at winning a Big Ten title. Nonetheless, it was a proud moment for Minnesota seniors who had come so far in such a short time. The Gophers drew a respectable sixth seed in the NCAA Southeast Regional and were headed for Richmond, Virginia, where they would face the University of Texas El Paso. Taking on UTEP would be a tall order, and sure enough, the Gophers found the going tough against the Miners' towering front court. Richard Coffey set the tone for Minnesota early in the game by diving for a loose ball. And gutsy guard play by the Gophers helped to keep the game tight in the closing seconds. Newburn with three. UTEP answered with a three-pointer of their own, sending the game into overtime. Then senior Willie Burton sprang to life, hitting from all angles, and Minnesota managed to squeak out a first-round victory. Northern Iowa had shocked number three Missouri in first round action, and the Panthers were poised to pounce on their next prey. Instead, it was number 34 who attacked first and kept on coming at Northern Iowa. Burton pulls up with a jump shot, and he hits another one. They can't stop him. He's... Senior forward Willie Burton was brilliant, pouring in a career-high 36 points and grabbing 12 rebounds as Minnesota went on to beat the pesky Panthers. For the second straight season, the Gophers had advanced to the Sweet 16. 
They were headed for the Big Easy, where the competition was going to be anything but easy. The Gophers' first opponent in the Southeast Regional Semifinals was Syracuse, a team loaded with talent. Richard Coffey drew his toughest assignment of the year, guarding 6'10", Derek Coleman. Coffey and company applied constant pressure, not only on the defensive end, but also on offense. Lynch's jumper with 9.22 to play gave the Gophers a lead they would never relinquish. Kevin Lynch, three-pointer, and he's in Minnesota shot a sizzling 79% in the second half, finishing with five players in double figures. For the first time in school history, the Gophers had reached the final eight of the NCAA tournament. The Gophers were gaining confidence with each game. Now Georgia Tech was the only roadblock to Denver and the final four. Minnesota took it to the rambling wreck early, opening up a 12-point lead. The Georgia Tech came roaring back in the second half. Minnesota seniors, sensing that this could be their last game, shifted into overdrive. Coffey, Lewis, Newburn, Shikinjanski, each senior played at their peak, including this young man. Burton looks for the three. And he got a timeout for Minnesota. Burton's biggest basket of the season brought the Gophers to within two with just six seconds to go. Missed it. No timeouts remaining. They need at least a two to tie. Kevin Lynch out of the corner. The dream had come to an end. Minnesota was emotionally drained. But this team had accomplished what no other University of Minnesota basketball team before them had. They made it to the final eight. And one can't help but believe that as long as this man is around, the Gophers will have more golden opportunities. Well, I think uh, he, in a way, is uh, a kind of father uh, image uh, to the players. He's tough on them uh, in one way, but on the other hand, I think uh, they feel close to him. I think they feel they can go to him with uh, problems and that he'll understand without compromising his own principles regarding uh, team discipline. So he has just the right chemistry, I think, uh, to bring out the best in a group of players uh, like we have here now.